Hi there and welcome to Delicious Art. Today's little art class video is all about painting a pear using complementary colours of purple and yellow. Um, and I'll be using soft pastels, of course, because that's my, my medium. So um, welcome to the class. If you'd like to paint along with me, feel free to do that. What you'll need is some pastel paper. So I've got my pastel paper here ready to go taped down lightly on the corners, just on my little board so that I don't have to hold it still all the time. So a nice piece of pastel paper that's just an A4 size. Um, you'll need a few pastels. So we're going to be using three primary colours, your red, blue and yellow today. And I've got a white and I've got a blue violet or a dark just for some shadows and a little kneadable eraser. Lovely, lovely. Um, that should be about all. The other thing I have is a little hand towel. So that's wet on one end and dry on the other. So that just means I can clean my fingers off in between colours and um, make sure that I'm not contaminating other colours so that you can keep your, your colours nice and fresh. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to share my screen so that you'll be able to see my tabletop and then I'll be talking through the class. So as I said, if you want to take, um, paint along with me, press pause, grab all your bits and bobs, come back and let's get stuck into it. Cool, see you in a minute. So I just have an iPad up above my table and what I'm gonna do is share my screen to there so that you can see what I'm doing while I'm talking about it. See if I can get my swipey thing to work. Sometimes it takes a little while to respond. So bear with me. There we go. So that's just coming up now. Um, your screen will probably be black and now you can see my screen. So I'm just going to go to my camera view and there you can see my table. So you can see I've got my paper on my board right there. I might actually want to flip that around because we're going to work in portrait shape today. I've got my pastels next to me in a small container. So I like to keep my pastels separate. When I'm um, doing a little project like this, I just like to have my pastels set out in, in a little container so I'm not fishing around in my bigger set looking for them all the time. I'll just adjust the focus so that it doesn't keep jumping around and we should be ready to go. All right, so as I said, I've got my, my paper taped down on the corners and I'm working on a, just a little bit of a board. You don't need to have that, but I just find that it's a little bit easier because I've got a nice smooth surface and I don't have to hold my paper still while I'm working on it. And this tape I've, I've used a few times, so it's not too sticky, so it's not going to tear my paper. If you've got fresh tape, just make sure that you um, stick it down onto your clothing or your tablecloth or something first, just so it's not too sticky, because it can sometimes tear the paper when you take it off afterwards. So this paper's um, just, a, a, I've got something on the other side, so I'm just using the other side of it for this little exercise today. That's why there's a few marks on there. If you do have marks on your paper and you want to remove them either before or during or after you've done your painting, then this kneadable eraser is your best friend. So they come in um, little square plastic wrapped um, erasers like that. So that's what they look like when you buy them nice and new. They're about $2.50 in the shops. And then you can pull it apart and just use little pieces of it or you can push it all together. It feels a bit like blue tack. The way they work is you kind of dab with it. And by dabbing, you're picking up all the little pigments on the paper, really, really good for pastel and charcoal. And so you can see on there, um, if I come up a bit closer on the, on the eraser now, it's picked up all the pigment off my paper. So that's going to stain the eraser and I don't want to reuse that side and put it back on. So when you've got a bit on there, just knead it again until you find a clean, clean side and then you can 
go again. So that's why it's called kneadable because you actually knead the pigment into it. It doesn't damage your paper when you take the pigment off and then you just keep kneading it until they get really, really grubby and then you can toss it out. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful little tool. Also really good for blending pastels if you want to sort of blend them and you can um, reshape it. So if you draw with charcoal, I'll just show you for example, grab a bit of charcoal here. So say I'm drawing with charcoal like this and I want to um, make a line or, or a bit of a light section in that charcoal. Your kneadable eraser is great because you can just about draw with it. So I can actually run that through there and it kind of picks up the charcoal. See on the edge there, knead it back in, find another clean edge, make it nice and sharp like a blade and you can come back in. So you can actually take your charcoal off really easily. It actually comes off easier than pastel does with your kneadable eraser. So sometimes you lose your whites or your lights with your charcoal drawing. And so I find this is really great just to get those little, little lights back in there. Just got to keep kneading. That's why they get black so quickly because it fills up with the charcoal pigment. Okay. And then if you just want to take it all off, you can do that too. See how it's all grubby? You push it around and then you can just kind of wipe it. So it's a really good way to clean your paper up if you want to get extra pigment off there. Okay, let's get started. So today we're going to do a pair and I thought we'd do a complementary colour blend. So complementary is the colours that sit opposite each other on the colour wheel. This is a little colour wheel. And if you want to find your complementaries, you just look at the colour that's opposite each other. So purples, opposite yellow. So purple and yellow are complementary. Red and green sit opposite each other, so they're complementary. And your blue and orange sit opposite each other. So that's another complementary blend. So today I thought we'd do purple and yellow because they're so yummy together. Um, and we're going to make purple first. Okay, so I'll just give a little sample down here. So to make purple, you need to blend blue and red. So there's a little bit of red and there's a little bit of blue. Okay, that's all you need to do to make colours with pastels. You do it on the paper. You don't actually use a palette like you would with wet paint. And then you blend it on the paper. So you, and then you can kind of just keep adjusting until you get the right tone of purple that you're after. You will get different shades of purple depending on the kinds of reds and blues that you use. So this is a warm or maybe it's cool. It's hard to tell sometimes. But your warms and cools will, will give you a different result. But you can kind of keep kind of fiddling around with that until you find the purple or the, the colour that you want. Okay, so that, that's a lovely way to make your secondary colours using just your primaries. So while I've got this little stick of charcoal here, I'm going to draw up the shape of a pear. So charcoal is your friend when it comes to drawing um, anything on, on paper, on your pastel paper. So it's a bit harder on your dark papers, but on your mid to lights, it's great for drawing. So that's going to be my basic pear shape today. So if you're painting along with me, Draw yourself a shape like that. If you don't have charcoal, then just use your stick of pastel. That's also a great way to draw. You could just use the end of it like this and put your shape on your page like that. Don't get too worried about your shape. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's pear-ish. If you don't want to do a pear, you can do an apple or a circle or whatever takes your fancy. Okay. Um, the other option is always pastel pencils. So if you have pastel pencils, they're really good too. This is a white one. So that's great for working on darker papers. But again, you can still use your pastel pencil to do your outlines. Lovely. So what I wanna do is make half of this pair purple and then the other half in a yellow because yellow is going to be my light tone. So we're using yellow as the light and my purple as my dark and we're going to blend them together to create these beautiful muddy sort of colors 
and get some texture and body into our pair. So pastels are very immediate. You kind of put them on the paper, push them around a little bit and you're done. There's no waiting for anything to dry. Um, you don't need to use any other equipment other than your fingers. Um, if you want to, you can use rubber tip blenders, which are really handy, especially if you can't fit your fingers into tiny little areas. These rubber tip blenders are great for pushing the pastel around on your page. And you can get sets of those with different tips on them. This is a Montmartre brand. Um, so they're fairly cheap. They're about $13 or so for a set of six. And they're called shapers, not blenders. So if you're searching for them online at um, Artshed or another art outlet, look for shapers. I used to always search for blenders and could not find them anywhere. That's what they're technically called. So we're going to imagine that there's light coming down on the right hand side. So when you've got your light on one side, it means you've got your dark on the other, generally. So let's make some purple down on this side. So what we want to really do is just put some red down on about half of your pair, okay? And we're going to push this colour around with fingers as we go. So that's some red. Now, I'm not being too precise about my lines today. This is really just a little exercise in colour and light and dark or tone. Now I've got some red on there. If you've got a big chunky stick like this, you can just use the end of it. This is a beautiful Art Spectrum Extra Soft Square Pastel. Very creamy, lovely. It fills the paper up really nicely. Beautiful to work with. And I actually don't like taking the labels off because then it's sort of, I can't remember what the colour was. And, you know, all that. So <laughs> I try to leave them on it for as long as possible, but eventually one day it'll wear down and I'll have to take it off. Then I've got a blue. So this is also an art spectrum, but it's a round, was a round one. I've used it so much it's now become a triangle. So I'm going to lie that flat on my paper and sweep that over. So what you want to do is get, get a bit of pastel down on the paper. So we're leaving that other area there to put the yellow in afterwards. So leave it, leave some area there for yellow. If you fill the whole thing in and try to put yellow over the top, it's just going to go a bit gray and muddy. So you want to leave this section here undone for now. So you can see that's already looking pretty purple and I haven't blended it in yet with my fingers. And you don't have to, if you really like the look of that, you could technically, and this is a beautiful thing about pastels, you don't always have to blend. You can actually let your pastels sit on the surface of the paper and just kind of play together. So you could actually fill all this up without sticking your fingers in there and just getting all the beautiful texture and the, the glow of the pastels doing the work. But I'm impatient, so I just want to push it all in. So I'm going to, I'm pressing pretty hard and I'm just pushing this in. Now, as you run your finger down through the shape of the pair, just pull it in that direction. So that it's doing this beautiful rounded sort of shape. So you come down the side and around like that. So what we're doing is we're pulling the pigment around in that beautiful shape and trying to create this lovely voluptuous sort of bell bottom on the pair. Okay, so see how that's all gone sort of a purple color. Now, if I wanted to glue it off a bit more, I can add some more glue over the top so you can push it in with your fingers and then put more pastel over the top. Can you see I've got a lot of dust gathering here? So because I'm working flat on my table, my dust is all just sitting flat on my paper and it gets a little bit annoying sometimes because it kind of gets in the way and it won't all push into the paper. So when that happens, you need to tip it off. Try very hard not to blow it off. Um, it's, it's hard not to blow it because that's our first instinct, isn't it? It's just to blow it all away. But if you do that, you're going to get it all over your house and everything else. So in the interest of trying to stay reasonably clean, try not to blow it. Just tip it up. So if you're on a board like this, you just tip it up on its side and bang it on your table. I've got an um, extra cloth over here on my left-hand side that's lying there. So I can just tip up my board. Give it a little tap 
and a lot of that dust will fall off and then later on I can take my towel outside and give it a shake and get rid of it all. All right, so hopefully by now, if you're following along with me, you'll have um, a fair bit of pigment down on there and it should hopefully be a bit purple. If not, don't stress. Whatever is there, is there and it's all good. So now what we want to do is put the light in on the right hand side. So the yellow is representing the light. So this is our light tone and then the purple's our dark. So what we want to do is, is wipe your yellow down, down through this side. This is a very creamy, beautiful yellow. Some yellows are very hard. If you've got a hard one, it's a little bit harder to get it to stick to the paper. But what we want to do is put that down on there, sort of gently overlap a little bit of this middle area where we've got some purple. So we want to kind of merge them together a little bit and you can just run the pastel over the top of your purple. If you didn't want to make purple, maybe you've got a purple pastel that you'd prefer to use rather than mixing those colours on the paper. That's already got some really nice light, hasn't it, going on. I love how this is really bright here and then it's kind of getting a bit more muddy as we move into the middle. So it's starting to create form and that's what we want to achieve. Okay, so I'm going to put my yellow down. Make sure I've got a, a clean finger so I might use this one because it's not too grubby. And I want to just pull the yellow in. I'm going to start from the outside so that it's nice, pure, clean yellow on the outside there. And just push that in to the paper. Okay, so I'm pushing it in. That means it's going to hold on to the paper and stick, basically. This paper is, um, what is this? It's called Meteors. Sorry, <laughs> I have to move my keyboard out of the way called Meteance, I think that's how you say it. Um, it's a Canson brand and this is a little A4 pad. So this was a, a grey colours in here. Um, most of them have been used up now. But yeah, nice little pad and it's a kind of a smooth, I've got a few bits of artwork in there that I did. Um, it's a smooth paper. So on one side you'll find it's got more texture. So you can see the little patterns in the paper there showing through. It's like little bits of chicken wire pattern. And so I could push that in and blend it and make it look smooth or, I, or you can leave it loose like that and let the paper pattern show through, which is sometimes nice. And then on the other side, it's quite smooth. So you can use both sides of this paper. Pastel will stick to both sides and you can get three or four or five layers on each side. So it's a nice paper to use. If you don't like that scratchy sandpapery paper, it's quite lovely to work on. It's not too hard on your fingers. So little pads like that, um, and you can get an A3. This is A4, but you can buy it in A3 pads as well, or you can get big sheets in it, just single sheets. So really nice paper to use for your pastels. All right, so we've got a fair bit of dust sitting on here. I've rubbed in this yellow, I've got that lovely, I love this yellow, it's so beautiful. Golden sort of yellow, isn't it? I'm just gonna pop a bit more on now to try and make it glow just a bit more. And if you can imagine where is the light shining on this? So I'm gonna say the light's right there on that shoulder. That's the brightest, lightest kind of area I'm imagining. I don't have a, a pair in front of me to, to decide that, but sometimes you can just imagine these things. So I see all this dust sitting around here. I'm going to tip that off in a minute. First, I'm going to rub some of this in, see if I can get some of that dust to kind of stick a bit better. So what I want to do is merge my yellow and my purple. The risk is pulling per too much purple over into the yellow. So you kind of want to start on the yellow side and then come across and as you do that you'll pick up purple and kind of keep putting it back in to the yellow so try really hard to keep that right hand side as pure as you can and then gently gently start to merge them together down the middle here so we're creating some form like that you might need to wipe your fingers off in between um, 
blending just to sort of remove some of that excess pigment from your fingers. And when you get to this point, you might have to wipe in between each swipe because what I'm trying to do now is get this lovely gentle sort of swipe coming through and then a gradual blend from the yellow round to the purple. So see how that's now looking like it's got form, giving it some form. To create form, you need to make time. So you need to have lights and darks and get them in the right spot. Okay, so I'm just going to tip off this excess dust again. Pop that over there on my little towel. Bring this back into the screen. So you can see most of that's been removed now. And I've got this really beautiful form going on in my pair. So I'm just going to start to push this around a little bit more just to gently, gently blend these two together and try to create that lovely round sort of feeling of the pair. Thinking that if the light is hitting on there, that's going to be my lightest area. Down under here on the left bottom side is going to be my darkest, darkest place. All right. So now we can put the little stem in. I've already sort of done that with my charcoal. I'm just going to use charcoal again. Charcoal and pastel do play nicely together. So you can actually use those both together. Put that on there, give it a little dip, a little bit of shadow there to look like it's dipping down inside the top of the pair. Okay. If you want to brown that off a little bit more, you don't like it being black, you can pop a bit of the red on and just push it in gently and that should make it a bit browner. So instances like this where you're, you've got a very thin line or a, or a tight corner where you want to blend your colours, that's where these um, blenders or shapers really come in handy because you can actually get into those tiny little spots and push that in nicely without smudging at all with your big fat fingers or my big fat fingers. Okay, lovely. Now, what we want to do is put some shadow or darken off down in here. Now we could keep playing with the blue and the red and try and get it darker, or we can use a darker pastel. So what did I pick up before? I've got this, what color is that? That's a, that's a blue violet. So your blue violet or a red violet, it might be red. Blue or red violet are beautiful because they're the darkest, you want the darkest ones. They come in different shades. This is the darkest and it's really lovely for shadows. So if you put a bit of your blue or red violet, if you don't have those, just, just use a bit of black or a really dark blue, something really, really dark. I tend not to use too much black because it does get a bit kind of heavy, whereas your violets are lovely because they're a bit warmer. So see how that's just a little bit darker under there and that's giving me a bit more shadow just at the base of the pear. So that's darkening that off a little bit. Not too drastically. Um, and if I had a black handy, I'd probably pop a bit of that in. You can try charcoal. Charcoal's not really black, but it might be just enough to darken that off a little bit, just to give you some shadow just on the base there. That's nice. And again, gently pushing that in. The harder you press with your fingers, the darker your color's gonna go. So if you don't want it to get too dark, just go lightly. And it's, I always like to start off lightly and then if I need to press harder, I can. But just start light and work up to it rather than going in really hard and then not being able to undo it. Okay, so it's looking like a lovely voluptuous pair. I've got more dust on there, so I'm gonna tip that off again. If you're working on an easel and you've got your board upright, then you'll find your dust will just drop down into your little tray and that's a lot easier. You don't have to worry about it so much. All right. So next thing I want to do is put a bit of a shadow under the base of this. So I'm going to use this dark pastel again. This just puts the pear on a surface. It just gives it a little bit of um, gravity, I guess, and lands it on a table or somewhere. So it's always nice to have a bit of a shadow underneath, just so it's not floating around in limbo on the paper. I like creating shadows. So that's nice 
if I didn't have my big blob of color there, we could pull that all the way across, create a really lovely little bit of a shadow. And you can see I'm just pressing lightly. I've still got enough pigment on my finger to just get a bit of that down on there and soften off the edges of the shadow. Just made it land on the table a little bit. Now, the other thing you could do, this is very quick. You could spend hours on pairs. I've loved painting pairs, but this is just a quick little demo. But the final thing you can do, if you want to add a little bit more light to that, um, is grab a white. So I always like to say, save your white for last because you can't go whiter than white. So always save that one for last until, uh, to, you know, to put the final highlights on. And what you can do is we said here is our, make sure it's nice and clean. See my white's a bit grubby. So I'm just gonna give it a wipe on my towel. You can clean your pastels off just by wiping them onto a little towel or a bit of paper towel or a tissue. And then we want a nice clean white edge and I'm just gonna put that down there over the yellow. So it's still got yellow through it. It's just giving it a little highlight. I'm just gonna bring a little bit down through here that's going to be my light section right there. The other thing I would do is just pop a little bit of light up here behind my stem, just so it looks like it's sinking down into my pear. And then I can grab a reasonably clean finger and just sort of dab that gently so it softens off that line a little bit. We don't want it to be too bright because this is our, our bright bit here. And then very gently just Pull in that white so you're softening off the edge of that. I'm pushing it into the yellow a little bit, but it's just given us that slightly lighter yellow tone through there, which indicates that the light's hitting on that little shoulder of the pear. So you can use white, you can use black, you can use all sorts of colours to create different tones of light and dark in your art. So as I mentioned earlier, you can then tidy up your edges with your needable eraser. So see, I've got I've gone outside the lines a bit there and I did say I wasn't gonna to get too concerned about that. But if you do get concerned and you wanna clean up your edges, just get your eraser, find a clean edge, run it around there. Sometimes you can't get all the pastel off. If it's really stuck into your paper, or it's a very dark color, it's a little harder to remove. But if it's just light crumbs on the sides like this, that's not too, not been pushed in too hard, then it should come off reasonably easy. Just remember to keep finding a clean edge on there because otherwise you just put the same color back down. So see how I'm just gently going over this red section I don't know if I'm going to get it all off. It might stick a bit too much, but I'll have a go. Okay, so it looks like some of that's really stuck in there. So it is a little harder to get darker pastels off sometimes, but you, it's really, this is good for just cleaning up your edges. Cool. All right, so I think that's about it for today's little lesson in pairs. Um, and you can have a practice with that. You can do all sorts of different complementary blends. Purple and yellow is one of my favorites. Um, your um, green and red is another beautiful complementary blend and also your blues and oranges. So thank you for joining me today. And if you do want to find some more videos, I'll just put this here because I haven't figured out how to make it work on the video itself. But if you do want to find more video art classes and spend some time with me, I've got lots of them on my website. So if you go to deliciousart.com.au and follow the shop tab, you'll find 30 odd classes in there of all different things from animals to landscapes to still lifes. Um, most classes are two hours or more and it's a paint with me style. So we actually talk through what I'm doing and we do it together. Um, and each of those classes is $19.50 Australian each. But what you get with that is um, a one page of class notes. You also get a reference image that you can then download and uh, view on your phone or your iPad or print out, whatever you need to do. 
And you also get access to the YouTube video class, which, as I said, is two hours or longer. Um, and that's unlimited. So you can access that for life and as many times as you need to. So, you know, if you start a class and can't finish it, you want to get back to it next week, it's still going to be there waiting for you. So for 1950 per class, it's a pretty good deal. Um, I used to run those classes in on Zoom for $27 and then in person for $37. So 1950 is pretty good, I reckon. So hopefully I'll see you over there. And if you do choose to do a class, um, I'd love to see what you paint. In the meantime, have a fabulous day and thanks for coming. Bye for now.